Hi everybody, it's Sharon from Vivid Days. Thank you for choosing to spend some time with me. It's been a while since I've been at the front of the camera. It's a special day. Wanda, we did it. We finally got our collaboration together. Thank you so much for your patience while I took time off to get married, change different jobs and get life admin sorted. But I'm here and why did I did it? I, we did it. <laughs> anyway, this video is all about how I created this. I think a lovely concept, which is done on glass picture frame, lots of layering, including um, the flowers. Um, but the theme was love. And uh, this is what I channeled. This is for my Neil. It's whatever love. So he'll get to see it tomorrow, which is your today. Hopefully he'll put that on his wall and there's enough man colour in there for him. Uh, but I loved creating this. I love the layers. I love these colours. And I think that's one of the great things about doing this mini challenge uh, is being that it's been liberating, working with colours that I wouldn't normally work with and uh, enjoying what you can create with it and being inspired. So art journaling is something that's going to feature in my channel. So this isn't the mini challenge. Uh, this is one for our collaboration. So pop over and see Wanda's uh, Blessed Creation. I'll put a link in the description. I cannot wait to see what you've created. Share the love. And also, if you enjoy this video, thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already, and comments are always welcome. Uh, other than that, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you feel the love. And I hope wherever you are in the world, you are safe and you're creating. I'll see you shortly. And if you haven't seen my uh, um, mini challenge, maybe pop over and have a little look at all my back catalogue. Anyway, I digress, didn't I? Speak to you later. Bye bye. Hey everybody, I am going to talk you through the ingredients for this. The first Amsterdam one is a turquoise that gets used in uh, the later layers. I'll tell you as I'm doing them. Then there's also a turquoise green, which is also Amsterdam. I have a Liquidex Basic, which is brilliant purple, followed by a Peebo, which is a rose fluorescent colour. In the Monarch, that was also a uh, fluoro acrylic, which was magenta. And then in, as I go over, it's Resitint, which is the aluminium. And then with Resinates, Sky Blue, Tresco Blue and Deep Pink. There's one additional one on there, which is Vintage Rose, which I forgot to put in that video. The colour that, that I applied on my base to start with is the Turquoise Green. Absolutely love that colour as it complements these blues, pinks and purples. Uh, adding in my Resitint Aluminium. Now... Just be careful when you apply that because if you apply a lot of heat it could go everywhere deep pink is what i've just added and here's the rogue one which is a little bit of that vintage rose and i'm slowly seeing how these colors are going to respond in the resin uh, the only thing going through my mind is at this stage is i wanted to make sure that the turquoise green had enough visibility because i knew that i was going to be layering these colors that one is the sky blue i'm using there now that is the monart which is the fluorescent uh, magenta fluoro magenta absolutely love how it responded and also layering in a little bit of that deep pink and this is it is exciting as it goes um there is a little bit more of the uh i think that's the um yeah that's the sky blue one uh coming through and i just allow it to sit a little bit Come in with my heat gun, just try and blend it together. I wanted a very nice floral inspired feeling with this or very romantic. It's been inspired by some of the roses I've been looking at and bouquets, but also some of the colours I've been working with. And uh, I just knew I wanted to see if I could bring these colours that I've enjoyed on acrylics into resin. It is important you make sure your board is level. Now, I could have done with using a little bit less resin than I used here. I mixed, uh, I think this was 100 mils, and I could have gone slightly less because if you're going to layer these moulds, you want to be able to add at least three layers. Anyway, got rid of my bubbles and just letting you see how it currently is. Now, this is going to keep moving and it, it does change a little bit the image, but not drastically. So I'm going to cover it all up. Layer one is done and we're going to start to work on layer two. So this is where you have to trust a little bit of your uh, mind's eye as far as what part do you want to protect on the lower piece and what colours do you want to add. Now, I'd lost a lot of the floral colour 
So I wanted to bring that back, but I still wanted to protect the top left hand corner of uh, my mold because I really wanted that um, that lovely um, turquoise green to come through uh, because this is going to be a nice little present for my Neil. And although it's romantic colours, it's in there and it's a bouquet, it's going to be on his wall. So I want it to have enough representation of colours that I think he will enjoy as well. Um, this is where you have to apply a bit at a time. Now, I decided rather than adding my clear, I would add the colour to the areas that I knew I wanted it to be. That way I'm going to get a little bit more control. And it's really hard when you're mixing up colours for such a small amount uh, to keep into that 10% and then not overcommitting. I actually did really good. There's very little leftovers um, on this project. And I was, I think, I think I did good with my restraint, but I'll let you be the judge of that. So I've just added a little bit of the deep um, pink, uh, the fluoro colour, and I'm coming in with a sky blue. I reckon that I didn't use this Tresco blue. I think I must have just imagined it, and it was the vintage rose that I should have swapped it out for. So far, we've not used the Tresco blue. Um, so, oh, did we use it in the first layer? No, we didn't. We used the uh, sky blue. Look at me talking to myself. If you haven't already and it's the first time you're watching my channel, please consider subscribing if you think my content is something you would enjoy. Also, if you are currently a subscriber, thank you for all your support. And if you're enjoying this, please consider giving me a thumbs up. I absolutely love interacting with you, so comments are always welcome. And if you are inspired by any of my colours or my work, remember there is a hashtag, which is hashtag Sharon Linley inspired me. That really helps me as well. Um, get my name out there but more importantly it helps me have a look at your work that you've created because that really gives me satisfaction as a person and as an artist anyway back to the project at hand so i've left this all real time so that you can really understand the process and how i work with this hopefully that will help you with the process should you want to follow it or it gives you an idea of the way I apply my resin. Now, this is where magic starts to happen. I'm now putting clear in there. The reason I'm putting clear in is to protect that area. Obviously, you need to have a, or I want a level resin piece. But some beautiful things happen when you add clear resin. You see it start to push back the pigment. You might not be able to see it as close up as I did. And you could really, in theory, leave it the way... I do to start with until I start blowing it and uh, creating some effects because it slowly then seeps back into it and it gives you this really nice ombre uh, graduation of those colours and you can see that sky blue is just responding so beautifully to the uh, magenta floral colour and uh, when I look back on the video, although I love my end result and I wouldn't change it, it's giving me ideas for future effects. Now, again, I'm applying it a bit at a time and you might think, Sharon, come on, just slap it on there. Well, no, because it's this is nearly at the top of the mould and it's not about how much resin I put on there. It's really about just slowly layering it. And you can see time lapse there. I waited 15 minutes until I, because I wanted to see the effects, then I come in and hand at uh, hand apply a little bit of heat and when I look back on it I could have stopped it the first go around but it just wasn't doing what I had in my mind's eye but this is the beauty of watching back your videos again because you get to see different effects now I'm trying to make sure I'm not over committing with the heat because I don't want it running over the uh, end of the mold but also I don't want it going too far into those areas I'm protecting one of the final stages I do is get my little um uh, light and I come through look for dust make sure there's no hairs and then I did a little bit of swirling um, just to add some uh, feature once I'd done it I thought mm, I didn't really like that so I come back in with a heat gun and, and blow it away however when I look at it now it looks like some dramatic coral underwater so absolutely love these colors anyway we're about to finish uh, layer two and we're about to come on to our final layer and this is where you'll start to see me introduce a little bit of um, well not a little bit you'll see me introduce the glass picture frame uh, but 
just feast your eyes on those colours for a moment. Wanda, I hope you are enjoying this and I cannot wait to see yours. As I've mentioned before, this is a collaboration with Wanda's Blessed Creation. So please pop over, show your love and support and say hi from me. So this picture frame had the glass stuck inside it. So the challenge for me was how do I put my masking tape around it to stop it coming through? And I focused on where the glass met the frame. Really, I should have looked for the um, the outer edge because they glued the frame in. So the leakage came from around the frame that attached the glass to it. I don't think I've articulated myself well. Anyway, if you're going to use it on glass, look for all your troublesome points. I use masking tape because it, it'll pull off. I've put some around the top of the white frame as well because I'm a messy worker. Uh, I It overhanged a little bit which caused me problems and you see me take the tape off through it. Uh, I should have just put it in line with the, um, the wooden frame rather than just, I did a lip over just to, just to try and protect it. I made that sentence very complicated then, didn't I? Um, for this layer, I used about 25 mil. The second layer I used 50 mil. The first layer I poured 100 mil and I probably only used 75 mil. I'm just trying to make sure, again, I'm applying the clear to the areas I want to protect. Again, trying to protect that top left co uh, corner, but to try and save some of those effects that I really enjoy as well. Now, because the colours I'm using, some of them are transparent. You can still see every layer that I've put in there. Uh, and you've got to take a leak puff faith. Now, the reason I'm applying it very, very thinly is because this mould is almost at its max and I'm doming it, but I'm doming it with colour and I know I'm not going to apply any heat. I am going to just apply the torch. I'm not going to move it around. So the colour that I'm using now, this is where I use the... Uh, no, it's not. I was going to say the Tresco Blue, but I'm not. This is where I'm actually using the Amsterdam Turquoise colour. Now, the reason I put a tiny little bit on the heart mould is I want it to connect to the rest of the piece. Now to start with, you might say, Sharon, that is not connecting. Trust me, it will, it'll all come together. So I applied my, the Amsterdam uh, turquoise color majority to the picture frame below, because that's gonna be a darker color. It should help make the center pop a little bit, but it should be sympathetic to the other tones. And I'm now applying a little bit of the uh, turquoise green. Uh, which is a colour that I have used in uh, the heart. Now that's where you're going to start to see it connecting together. And I wanted to go fairly loosely with the picture frame because most of it is going to be covered up, but I wanted it to be an extension of the heart, but not mirror imaging it. So I just started to slap it on and I actually had some real fun. And, and that's where um, some other amazing effects, in my opinion, came through. And it definitely did make it look like it's connected. You can see I got some resin on that masking tape now. So I get myself in a bit of a sticky mess trying to remove the masking tape once I'd spotted it because it meant that where I'd leveled the picture frame, it wasn't quite level again. So you see me pull off the tape, get rid of my gloves, pull it all off and make sure it's level again. And then we're good to go. But I am now adding, this is where I'm adding the sky blue. It's almost like a white, it's not, it's sky blue obviously, but it's just enough to give a contrast. And, and the the pigments respond so well to it, bleeds into it, and it almost gives that extra bit of depth there. So again, I'm trying to understand control for it to connect, but to still see enough of those bottom ones coming through. And I think it looks lovely. I'd love your opinion. At this stage, you're probably going, Sharon, what are you doing? Stop it. Just trust me. Have some fun. Slap it all in there. <laughs> it works well. Uh, majority of it is clear. It's just this little corner I work on and then I bring some pink and the purple in. So this is the latex. Uh, I really enjoy this colour. It's the brilliant purple. It, it Just enough tones to blend it all in together and add a little bit of more dimension to it. I think that's the word I'm looking for. And I use sparingly what I want on my heart first. It gives it a chance to level out. I get to see how it's responding. I then have a chance to think about, do does it work well for the composition? Do I want to add more? And at the same time saying, Sharon, restraint, restraint, restraint. <laughs> um, and then you're going to see me just pour it in randomly. I know that the corners 
are going to be seen but the middle isn't so I sp spend a bit more time in the corners on the picture frame and I'm trying to think about where the colours are on the heart so that it could make sense when I put it on underneath you could have just stuck with a solid colour which is what I've done before on the other two that I've made uh, but the, with this one not so much uh, I'm going to have a little think about what I want to say next but I hope you're enjoying this I hope that it's adding value to you and uh, I hope you're enjoying seeing this piece come together wonder so I'm about to add the pink and silver and that's when you'll see the heart all come together and you'll also start to see some amazing effects in my opinion coming on the picture frame. I will take you for a flyover so you get to see the uh, colours and all the effects but in the meantime I'm just going to put a little bit of soothing music on for you uh, until I talk through when we're at demoulding stage and showing you the picture frame. I hope you're feeling very relaxed. 
So this is the next day and this is me showing you where I got the leakage. So you see how there's a tiny little board that's inside the board where the glass permanently sits on it. That's where the leakage came down the side. So if I if I'd have put my masking tape further up, it would have protected it. But this is showing you in real time a little bit of heat because it's still fairly soft. It was only 12 hours ago. Um, it comes away very easily. I could actually pull it away with my finger. So um, this is a proper tool for removing resin, but uh, I used a different one for around uh, the heart. And if you're interested, I can let you know what that is. But I just wanted to show you this is what I had to do. Just remove those edges there. Um, there is a tiny little bit of leakage that comes and you'll see that towards the end of the video, but I'm not too stressed by that. I, um, it's gonna be against the wall anyway. And I think people like to know where an artist has been. Uh, you don't. It took me about five minutes to remove this part here, but to save you time, you get the drift as to what I was doing. The one came out of the mold for the hearts very well. There was a two little, should I say, it felt fairly sharp corners which I just got my resin uh, tool to scrape it off sanded it lightly and then adhered it to this picture frame which you're about to see now I used double sided sticky tape because last time I tried doing this my heart kept moving all off center when the resin was trying to self level itself but how exquisite does that look and um, I'm just testing where it will go in there making sure it does fit and that i'm happy with it and then off camera there's a little bit of double-sided tape on there it's archival one it's very strong the archival means nothing it's just that's what i had in my uh drawer just something to secure it before i push down uh firmly i just hold it up to make sure it is central once i'm happy with that i push down but remember it is very thin glass so even though i applied a little bit of pressure i wasn't being silly with it so that wasn't going to go anywhere. So it should hold it in place. I'm not too sure if that what released some air bubbles. At the end, I talk about a few air bubbles that came up. And I torched it. No reason for them to have come, but they did. They applied. Uh, they applied. They appeared. Now, I wanted to have a forever on that because obviously he's my forever person. And I was just trying it in a few different places. On the video, unfortunately, I forget to show you that I do put it into the heart um, where I'm going to place it. Not now. Come on, Sharon. Move it to the top. Oh, she's about to do it. Yep. <laughs> so once I pour my clear resin on and let it self level, make sure everything's okay, remove dust. I then put in that little uh, forever token in the top, make sure it wasn't going to move anywhere, which it didn't. And it looks lovely there. You see me using my spirit level throughout this. It's just to remind you every level, at every stage I do, I'm always checking that it's level. I wanted to make sure that my resin was going to look even in the picture frame it wasn't going to seep over one edge and and again it was restraint here i could have used all of the resin that was in that cup but there was no need so i didn't i wanted the it to just adhere and to help it be at one with it and then i just left it to wait now this is where i did leave it for four hours six hours before i came in a um checked it out and attached my picture frame not my picture frame my backboard to it and that's when I got my palm print in there a little bit because I applied a bit too much pressure so very annoyed but I was pressured because the time deadline is tomorrow for um, this collaboration uh, but I managed to cover it up with some flowers that I was always going to put there but I was going to put them on the right side anyway I'm Sharon and I'm digressing what you see me doing now is just helping the resin level out, make sure there's no obvious big air bubbles. I'll then come and cover it up after I've made sure there's no dust particles. What I thought was no air bubbles, but a few seeped on the top. But when you're looking at it, it still doesn't ruin the piece. It still, I think, adds a lot of value. And I can see this in many people's homes, these different styles, uh, different messages. But what do you think? Let me know your thoughts to this project and wonder. I cannot wait to see what you've created. And oh, I am just in love with these colours. So here we are for review and I absolutely love this concept. There's a few things that I can improve on for next time, um, which is 
the back where I tape it to stop it coming through. And also, um, there's a few air bubbles there. I thought I'd tried my hardest to get rid of them, but this is going to be for my Neil, and he will love it. I'm sure he will. Um, yeah, forever. But just look at that depth, though, and I really love the addition of these flowers that I put together myself. They were going to be on this side, but I touched my resin a little bit too early, and I've left my little palm print there, but, you know, it's for Neil again. So I'm forever there with him. I just hope that the colours come through in here. Just that layering added so much depth and movement. And I just am in love with these colours together. And I think that at the side just pops it off. So these are great ideas for every day, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, uh, the world's your oyster. So I'm going to show you many different concepts of this. And it it is all sealed up just a little bit of runs down but that's the something i perfect and you may not want to put the flowers there you might want to put some either side but i didn't want it to be even i've got my odd number like one two three and i quite like them hanging off the edge there so it looks like i've just been out in the meadow and picked them so please 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 make sure you do pop over and see the amazing Wanda from Wanda's Blessed Creations say hello from Sharon from Vivid Days and have a look at what she's created in our collaboration. I cannot wait to see it. She is such a beautiful soul who's been so patient with me while I've got my life in check and be able to finally work on this collaboration together. Um, I hope this has inspired you. If it has, remember, hashtag Sharon Lindley inspired me so I can look at your creations. Let me know what you think to this colour scheme. And what i really enjoy about this color scheme color, color scheme is i was inspired by doing my 28 day millage mini challenge if you've not seen that pop over and have a little look the colors i worked on there inspired this piece so it is worth just putting some colors and going crazy and having fun on an art journal uh, because you never know where it's going to lead you i just love this anyway if you thought that this video was worth it, thumbs up, subscribe, share, comments are always welcome. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think to this. But I will see you on the next video. Wanda, I hope you enjoy this. I hope it fits the brief. And I cannot wait to uh, see your video.